Hello and thanks for joining me for another video in the series where I've been building experiments from Charles Platt's brilliant introduction to electronics, Make Electronics, the third edition thereof. So in the last episode, we were introduced to the world of logic chips and I followed the instructions in the book to build a practical circuit, an electronic lock, using a couple of chips with AND gates. Now, if those terms don't mean anything to you, then please do watch the previous episode to be enlightened and uh, I will link it in the description below. Now, in today's episode, we're continuing our exploration of logic chips and I'm building another practical circuit from the book, but this time using OR gates. But before we get on to that, let me set out the problem that the circuit is trying to solve. So let's take a typical TV quiz show. So the quiz master is going to ask the contestants a question and then as soon as either or both of the contestants know the answer, they're going to press a button on their podium and the one who's fastest, their light is going to come on to let the quiz master know and the quiz master will then give that contestant the opportunity to answer the question. So the problem that the circuit in this part of the book is trying to solve is how do we construct a system that controls uh, those buttons and those lights and coordinates them. So let's have a look at that. We've already been introduced fairly early on into the book to a simple circuit whereby we can use a button to turn a light on. And it was this very simple arrangement. So we have an LED and the power to that LED is interrupted by a momentary push button switch. The only other thing we have in the circuit is just a current limiting resistor just to protect the LED. And of course, as soon as that button is pressed, then power will be connected to the LED and it will come on. Well, that's all well and good, but it's a bit too limited for our purposes here. There are a number of things wrong with it. For one thing, in a fast paced quiz show, contestants are much more likely to just stab at the button rather than remember to press and hold it down. And the problem with this circuit is as soon as they release the button, the LED will go off again. So if they stab it very quickly, it might be hard for the quiz master to see that the light has even come on. So how can we solve this problem? We've already seen a circuit that can do this for us, which is the 555 timer chip wired up in bi-stable mode. And I've simplified things by only showing the connections that we're interested in here. So do bear in mind that there will, of course, be other connections to the 555. So things have changed slightly here in terms of the wiring. So rather than have the button connected to the positive supply rail, we have a pull-up resistor connected to the positive supply rail, which is holding pin two, the trigger pin of the 555 high. Now remember that the trigger pin on a 555 is active low, which means that to trigger the 555, that pin has to be taken low. So in the normal state of affairs, we want it to be high and that's the purpose being served by this pull-up resistor. The button is now connected to the ground rail. What's going to happen is, as soon as that button is closed, it's going to connect the ground rail to pin two, which is going to pull it low. And that is then going to send pin three, the output pin high, which is going to light up the LED. And of course, because this is a bi-stable circuit, the output will stay high until the 555 is reset. So even if the contestant releases the button at this point, it's not going to switch off the LED. So that's great. We've solved one problem, but in doing so, we've created another, which is as soon as somebody's answered one question, then everything's stuck. That contestant can't answer another question because their light will never go off. OK, so how do we solve this? That's where the reset pins of the 555 come in. So by adding a double throw switch here, we can have a situation where the reset pins are normally held high by this pull up resistor here. And remember again that the reset pin is the same as the trigger pin on a 555, it's active low. So in the normal state of affairs, we want it to be high. And while the switch is over in this position, then the buttons here will be enabled 
So when they're pushed, they can trigger the 555, which can cause the output to go high and the LED to light up. Then when we want to reset the circuit, ready for another question, we can simply move this switch across. That's gonna have two effects. Firstly, it's going to disconnect the push buttons so that the contestants can't jump the gun and press them until the quiz master is ready. And secondly, it's going to connect the reset pins of both 555s to ground, which is going to reset them. So if there is an LED on at this point, it will go off and everything will get back to normal. And then as soon as the quiz master is ready for everybody to answer another question, they can just flip the switch back and then we're ready to do that. But there is still one final issue to solve and it's an important one. When the switch is across to enable these buttons, then both buttons are active. Now, if both contestants know the answer to the question and they both press the buttons at more or less the same time, even if one of them is very slightly faster than the other, both LEDs will come on and it might be very difficult for the quiz master to identify who was fastest. So really what we want is a situation where the fastest player's light comes on and then it prevents the slower player's lights from coming on as well. So that can be solved. And the author came up with a very ingenious solution of using three OR gates to do so. And we can do this with a single chip because as you'll recall, the OR chips that we've been using have four OR gates within them. So one chip is enough to do this. So to begin with, assuming that the switch is across so that the buttons are armed, those buttons will of course be connected to the ground rail, but uh, they're not going to do anything at the moment until they're pressed. So now we've got an OR gate between each button and the trigger pin of the 555. And one side of that OR gate is connected to the button and also to a pull-up resistor. We've also got this third OR gate here and the inputs for that are being taken from the outputs of the 555s. Now, of course, both outputs are low at the moment. So both inputs to this OR gate will be low and its output will be low. So one side of these OR gates is low but because of these pull-up resistors, the other side is high, which means the output of these OR gates initially is going to be high, which is going to keep the trigger pins of the 555s high, which is what we want. When the button is pushed by one of the contestants, then that is, of course, going to connect this input to ground. So at this point, both inputs for this OR gate are low which means its output is going to be low. And that is, of course, going to trigger this 555. So what will then happen is even if the contestant at this point has let go of the button and sent this back high again, is this 555 will have already been triggered. So its output will go high. That will, of course, light the LED for that contestant. But also, it will make one of the inputs of this OR gate high. And that will mean that the output of this OR gate is high. And I hope what you can see from that is that now, at this point, it does not matter what happens with the buttons, whether they're pressed or unpressed, because even if this other input goes low, because this input to each of the OR gates is high, its output will stay high. So effectively, neither of the buttons can make any difference at this point. So this light will stay lit regardless of what happens with these buttons. The quiz master can see who has pressed their button first and ask them the question. And that state will remain steady until such time as the quiz master flips his switch back, sends a low signal to the reset pins, and then everything gets reset back to the star. Okay, so that's how it all works. Let's have a look at the actual circuit in action. So here's the built circuit and uh, as you can see I've done my usual practice of modifying the circuit in the book slightly so that I can have the user interface elements on a breakout board here. Now at the moment the host's switch is in the off or reset position so neither of the contestant buttons is going to work but if I move this switch to the ready position, you'll see there's um, an LED here that indicates that 
We're now ready for contestants to answer the question. Now let's assume that contestant one is quickest off the mark. They press their button, you see their light comes on and stays on even though I've stopped pressing the button. If I try to activate contestant two's button at this point, you can see nothing happens. It's been blocked successfully. So now we move on to another question. So at this point, the quiz master resets everything by moving this switch. And then again, when they're ready for to take some answers, they move it back to reset the circuit. You see that contestant one's light has now gone off. And now for this question, let's say contestant two is quickest off the mark. Press their button, their light comes on, and once again, you can see that has successfully blocked contestant one. Uh, so it's always going to be very clear who answered first. And what I'll just try now is if I reset one more time, is I'll just try to press both buttons simultaneously. And you'll notice I must have been marginally quicker there on the first one. But the main thing to note there is whatever I do, there's always going to be just one light comes on. And again, there's slightly faster on the other finger. So there you go, that is the button blocker. Now clearly in that circuit we were just using two buttons, but it is very easily expandable to use more. And I think there's lots of scope here for using this circuit as a basis for a really nice quiz system that you can use with family and friends. And to that end, I've included in the description a link to a UK source for some nice big quiz show style buttons with internal LEDs that would be ideal for this purpose. But wherever you are in the world, similar items should be quite easy to source. Now next, the book introduces us to another circuit that's absolutely vital for digital electronics, which is the flip-flop. And if that is immediately conjured in your mind at nothing except for flexible summer footwear, you really need to join me for the next episode. See you then.